Hello, this is the first in a series of 11 sermons on staying faithful in challenging times. We took time to study 11 sermons on the Epistle of James about some of the challenges that New Testament Christians were facing. Uh, this particular lesson, uh, because of some technical difficulties, did not get saved as a live broadcast during the services of the Ellettsville Church of Christ. But I thought I would take a moment to review through this lesson for those of you who would like to have the entire series. And so we invite you to listen and look along and to check out the rest of the sermons in this series. When we talk about staying faithful in challenging times, we might consider that it is thought that James is probably one of the very earliest books to be written. And as we look at that, he writes it to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. And so these were Christians of a Jewish heritage who were likely undergoing some tremendous persecution. And they had challenges inward among God's people and outward from outward outside sources. And so let's consider today uh, the challenge of trials in James chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. As we consider this, how is it that Christians can face the trials that come in life? We might consider, first of all, that James makes the point that Christians can face trials with joy. And when we look at what he says there in James chapter 1 and verse 2, he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. That word count there, my understanding is that's a mathematical or a accounting term. And he says, add it all up. Add up what God has done for you to make you a child of God. L look up uh, and study what God has done for you. And then look at the trials that you face and then count it all joy. When we consider that, we think about that even in the face of some very desperate times and difficult circumstances, even when brethren aren't getting along or when there are outside persecutions coming along, there are trials to our faith that we can have joy. Consider also what the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. He says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Here, Paul makes the point that we can glory in tribulations because it is working in us something so much better, and he closes with the word there, hope. And so, again, add it all up, count it up, and, and see what uh, the end result is, what the sum is. We see what James says and what Paul says. Consider also what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. And he says there, May the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Our suffering is temporary. Our trials are not eternal. But what God has for us is eternal, his eternal glory. And so in the face of trials and persecutions, difficulties, we can have and we must have and face those things with a joyful attitude. Would you consider another thing that James mentions? That we need to have an understanding mind. There are some things we need to understand about the trials of life. In James chapter 1 and verse 3, James says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. We read what Paul said in Romans 5, and now James also reminds us of that, that there is purpose behind those kinds of trials. There is good that can come from it so that we can be equipped to deal with future temptations and trials, so that we can help others, and that it produces in us the endurance that we need to overcome. Job understood that after having suffered a great deal and having asked God lots of questions, and when God answers him that basically, Job, you don't know what it's like to be God, and there's no way you can understand that, Job says in Job 42, verses 2 and 3, he says this to God, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You asked, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. 
Uh, here, Job admits there's things that he can't understand, but he does understand one thing. His mind could understand that he can trust in God. He can count on God. He can absolutely put his entire confidence in God. And that was something that his mind could understand. When we look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18, the Apostle Paul writes there, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. When we consider that, there are some things we need to focus on. And we need to understand in our mind that it's not all about what happens here on this earth, but it's about the riches and glory. And that's what we have been called for, to serve God in this life and to have glory in eternity. And we understand that. That helps us through the challenge of trials. Consider a third thing that James has to say about the challenge of trials, that we need to have a compliant will. That even in the face of these trials, and we're trying to be joyful, and we're trying to understand all the right things, that we can't use trials as an excuse to not do the will of God. In verse 4 of James 1, James writes, But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Maybe the key word in this verse is let. Let patience have its perfect work. Keep being faithful. Don't give up. Don't allow it to distract you and to move you away from those things that you know you need to be doing. Let it have its perfect work. Let it make you perfect, complete. Let it uh, make you so that you lack nothing. Comply to God's will. Obey God's word and do the right things even when it's not easy and even when there are those hard times. Isaiah wrote about this in Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 8. He describes who God is and who we are. He says, But now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. And all we are the work of your hand. We realize that God, he's the one who makes us and molds us and shapes us. And we're the clay and we're to comply and we're to be molded and shaped. In a similar way, Isaiah also says in Isaiah 45 and verse 9, Woe to him who strives with his maker. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him who forms it, What are you making? Or shall your handiwork say, He has no hands? We need to trust this, that God knows what he's doing. And our job is to let God do his work and to make sure that we are doing our work and that we are complying with what his will is. A fourth point that we might consider is in James chapter 1 verses 5 through 8 and that we need to have absolute confidence in God, believing in him entirely with no doubting. These verses in James chapter 1 say, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. When we think about this. When we are facing those trials, we need to ask God to supply what we need. Here he says, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. Because God gives freely. God gives liberally. And God will give those things that we need to endure the challenge of trials. And don't doubt that God is able to help and that he is willing to help, that he wants to help and that he will help. Uh, when we think about that, uh, we understand that it's great to have God on our side when we have to face the difficulties of life. Isaiah wrote again in Isaiah 41 and verse 10, he says, Fear not, as he records the words of the Lord, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. To realize that God is our help. He's the one that we can turn to. When we need help. Also in Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 through 8 the scripture says but trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. 
In all of your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. In those hard times, do not trust in yourself, but to trust in God. Go in the way he tells you you should go. Trust in him. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear God and be doing those right things. Trust that God is able to help you when you need help. Well, let's look at one more. In James chapter 1, verses 1 through 12, let's look at verses 7 through 12 as we consider that we must serve God even in trials with a committed purpose. Those verses say, Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass, its flower falls, and its beautiful appearance perishes, so the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. In times of trial, don't put your trust in your riches, and don't feel sorry for yourself because you're poor, but renew your purpose in serving God because that is what is of the highest importance, because those who endure and those who stay true to their purpose, they receive the crown of life. You might consider also in Psalm 37, verses 1 through 5, where David writes, Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Here is the assurance that God will be with you, but you have to just stay on track. Stay focused. Keep serving God. Not let any evildoers, workers of iniquity, or any bad thing get in your way. Delight in God, commit your way to the Lord, trust him, and God will take care of you. As you consider these things today, you may be facing some very serious trials in your life, some really hard things. Would you consider that you can have, even in the face of those trials, if you are in Christ and a faithful child of God, you can have a joyful attitude. You can understand some things that God would have you to know about his blessings toward you and how these trials are temporary, but the glory that God has for his faithful ones is eternal. You can comply to his will and be faithful in every aspect of life. You can believe with all your heart, not doubt, trust in God that he will take care of you and realize that your job is to stay committed to the purpose of living for him, serving God and serving others. Uh, as you think about these things, maybe some person who's uh, watching this video has never obeyed the gospel. If you've never repented and been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, we'd love to help you reach out to us so that we can help with that. A child of God who's given into the trials and given up, if you'll turn away from that and confess that before God, ask for his forgiveness, he'll forgive you as well. We hope you'll watch the rest of this series of lessons. We hope that you'll evaluate those compare them with the word of God. If you find those to be true, hear them, believe them, obey them. Thanks for watching today, and please take a look at the other videos.